Good morning. First of all, I want us to continue praying for our pastor and all that, that God would send the healing there and all this. I wonder today, I'm going to be a talking on friends. You know, Brother Thomas, he uh, called me Friday, wanted to know if I could teach. I said, I can't. But he didn't know that the Lord had already given me something before Monday, you know, to teach on. So I'm going to try to teach on this being a friend. I wonder today how many friends have I got in the building? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to work on that. Well, there's Joe. Philip. There's one. How many friends? Now, let me ask the question again. How many friends have we got? There we go. That's 100%. Praise the Lord on that. Did you know that being a friend, if you want to turn with me, I'll be talking a little bit. Turn with me to Proverbs, the 18th chapter there while I'm talking here. Did you know friends are supposed to be friends? Christians are supposed to be friends with one another. Is that right? That's Bible, that's Scripture, where we'll get in, 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 into this in a little bit here. We are to be friends with one another and pray for one another and to love one another as Christians are to. I have seen people that are Christian people. It's sad that, well, I don't like this and over here, but I like this and you know. It's not a matter of like and all that. We are to be friends with one another and to love one another to where that we can help one another when the time arises there that we need to help, you know. We need friends. Everybody here needs friends. The world needs friends, and we need to be a friend to the world. And we need to be friends to one another here. And we want to bring this out. I've got four scriptures I want to talk about that God has given me here. And we are to remember that. The Bible teaches us to have friends and to be a friend because we never know when somebody on this side or in the middle or over here needs a friend, needs help, needs talking to. Uh, maybe pick up the phone and want to call somebody, you know, and ask them, say, I need a friend today. Would you pray with me and talk with me and, and lift me up and help me because I'm going through stuff that I uh, don't need to be a going through here. And that's important to be a friend. I'm just giving you from my heart what God gives me today. So we're going to find out a little bit about being a friend here. So we're going to read this verse here and see here. You know. It says, uh, verse 24 says, A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And I'll stop right there before I go to the other part. If we want friends, and if we want the world to know that the church is a friend, we have to be friendly to them. Even though they do not live right like we do, and they do not maybe not believe like we do, but we have got to be that friend to the world as well as well, being a friend to each other that's in the church. Because if we don't be a friend to them, the Bible says to let our light shine before men that they will see our good works and want to glorify the Father. And a friend will do that, you know. If we see somebody that's lost and undone, we may not be able to go to them. God may refrain us from going to them, but we can pray that God will save them and help them become, until they can become a friend to us, you know, at that time. But we have to have the attitude with each other and the world to be friendly. And I always keep an old saying I quote a lot of times here. And I want you to remember this saying here. If we want to make a good impression on the lost and if we want to make a good impression on people at the church, you know, to try to make friends, we have to have the right attitude to approach one another. And I always say it like this. Our attitude determines our altitude. 
with each other, with God, and with the world. We have to have the right attitude, you know. If I was to come up to Brother Philip here and just say off of, the, off of my head, saying, well, I just don't like that shirt you've got on. I don't like the way you're acting and all that. You know, Brother Philip is going to say, hey, I wouldn't want a friend like that, you know. But if I was to come up to him and if he likes fishing, I'll talk about fishing, I'll talk about this or that, whatever he likes. Because I want to try to establish my friendship with that person and with him. And that's what we need to do with each other here today. I want to stress that a lot. We are to be a friend to each other so we can help each other in the church and outside the church and be there for them. Because we don't know who's a hurting out there. We don't know which Christian person that we know that's going through this or that, but we are to be there. If somebody calls me in the middle of the night, I'm going to take my time and listen. If they just want to talk, you know, I just and to say I just needed somebody to talk to, you know. Or if they want to go get a cup of coffee or something like that. I don't drink coffee, but well, I'll drink something else. But uh, if you want to do that, I'll go with you and we'll just listen. Just to be a friend. And I'm going to tell you something. On this next part of this verse, it really hit me real good this week. You know, bring a lot of remembrance to me, you know, as being a friend. Let's look and see what it says, you know, here. It says, A man that hath friend must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother or a sister or aunt. I remember when that hit me, when God gave this to me, when I was uh, out on Lookout Mountain, not far from where Brother Philip lives, you know, up at Alpine is where we was raised up on the brow of the mountain there. There was a friend one day come to me and said, I'm going to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother, you know. And my best friend that's sitting back here, we was dating at that time, and I was lost and undone, you know. And she carried me to church. And I got under conviction. And I tell you what, I found the best friend that I've ever found in my life. He stuck with me these going on 49 years, you know, with closer than a brother. He didn't look at me, Brother Thomas, just to see who I was. He didn't look at me and say how much money I had. He didn't look at me for what I was wearing or where I came from. He just told me that I'm going to be your friend as long as you be my friend. A friend that sticks us closer than a brother. You may have a true friend in this church or anywhere else that they might let you down at a time, but this friend that I've got, which is Jesus Christ and God, has never let me down, you know. Praise God. Boy, I tell you what, I could shout and run right now. Praise God. He was that friend. And he told me, anytime you need me, I will be there. He know. God doesn't have to drop anything that he's doing there to be your friend. He's a 24-hour-a-day friend and seven days a week and be there with you when you need. He is there when you're in trouble. He's a friend. You know, and I tell you what, this knows it feels so good sometimes when you're sick and when you're feeling down and out and that big brother comes and lays his arms around you and says, may not even say anything, Thomas. He may not even say nothing, but just lay his big arm on, on your shoulder and say, I'm just going to be a friend. Let me ask the question. Could we do that to one another? Could we? As Christians, we are to love one another we are to pray for one another, and we are to be a friend to one another here to help and all. I have been with people, and I did, and just to help them, just be there with them. And I tell you about my brother, I think about this a lot, that was dying with cancer, that worked on the arsenal in Huntsville. And I told my wife, I said, He's got plenty of money, you know, and he's got everything he needs and everything like that. He called me, said, I want you to work for me today. And I found out right quick that he 
really didn't want me to work, but he just wanted me to be there. Have you ever been like that? Have you ever been like that, that somebody just wanted you to be there? And this is what God wants the church to do to the world and to those that are lost and undone with God is to be there for them and be a friend for them whenever they want to come in and get right. We are to be prepared and be ready to, on a moment's notice to put our arms around them and, and talk to them and to say if they want to get saved, come and get, help them get in the altar and tell them the plan of salvation and how to get saved. Every Christian ought to be able to do that. To say, you know, don't look at somebody for what they got or anything like that or what they're wearing. You know, we may see, like a pastor said one time, Sister knows we may see a snotty-nosed kid come in that wants to get saved. Don't worry about that. Get them saved. Well, you know what we are? It's just like fishing. We catch them and God cleans them. As friends, we can catch them and God can clean them up and put them big arms around them, him like they did me whenever he saved me and said, I'm going to be your big brother friend for the rest of your life if you live for me. Does that make sense? You know, being a friend. Because in this day and time, I look around and I have had people to come to me at the bank not knowing who they were. Would you pray for me? That they see your life. You know, if you're prepared and be there and to be a friend for them, I said, sure, I prayed for one out in front of the bank. I didn't care who was watching or not. I prayed for him, and that really made him feel good, you know. And that's what friends do. Do you know it? Friends will help other friends. There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Praise the Lord. And I like this friend, you know. Praise God. I just love that friend. You know, it makes it just makes all the difference in the world to be a friend. You know, I had some good friends when I was me and my brother teamed up with two more guys that we were I tell you what, we were the best friends there. They liked to drink and they liked to smoke. You know. I didn't like to drink, and I didn't like to smoke, and I didn't, and I ain't to this day never touched it or smoking or drinking it all my life. I've never done that. But I respected them, and they respected me, you know, because we were friends. Does that make sense? You know, you might like banana pudding. I might like chocolate cake, but you're still my friend. You get and see the point. You're tapping into the point here. We are to be friends to one another and to do what God wants us to do here. Now, if you turn with me to John, the 15th chapter, I want to talk about here. You know, if we stick with God and we stick with Jesus Christ and we live right, and we do what we're supposed to do. There is a friend that stays with us all the time. You know, a friend will share things with you that they won't share with nobody else. God is my friend. And He shares things with me that He don't tell you or anybody else. You are, I've got proof of that. I'll give you scripture for that. You remember when God was fixing to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He said he was a friend to Abraham, which I'll get on into this in a little bit. Should I hold this from Abraham or should I tell him? So he told Abraham what he was fixing to do because he had a friend in Sodom and Gomorrah named Lot and he wanted him to get out of there, you know, and he told him. And you know the story where he went from 50 all the way down and they talked. Now that's a friend. Uh, Abraham was God's friend and God was Abraham's friend there. And when friends are tell friends things that they won't tell nobody else, like I said this now. But let's read this here. Starting at John here. The 15th chapter in verse 13. 
But I want, I know he got it up there, but I want to back up to verse 12 here. It says, This is the commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. I want to change this a little bit and say it like this. This is a commandment. Love your friends if I loved you as I'm a friend of loving you. You see, friends and hands goes hand in hand. The friends there goes hand in hand to there to loving one another. You know, I love my wife. She's been my best friend. If she tells me to do something, you know what I'm going to say? Yes, ma'am. You know, I don't do what she says. Yes, ma'am. You know, the old saying is, if mom ain't happy, there ain't nobody happy. Uh, you know, I'm just saying that. But me and her has been best friends. To my knowledge, we have never had a problem or anything. And if we do, we pray about it. That's the best way to do it. We're best friends. And, and that's the way we should do with one another. We are to tell each other what the problem is and get pray for it and pray for my friends. If Philip calls me here and needs help and needs prayer, I'll tell him, you're my friend and I'm going to pray for you. Whatever it is. I don't want him to tell me what it is because God knows all about it and he will take care of the problem, you know, as long as it is. So we to love one another. It says, greater love than have no man then he lay down his life for his friend. Could we do that? Could we do that? To lay down our life. You know, there comes a time that we have to help, have to help friends. We may not lay down our lives. But listen, if our friend gets in trouble, I'm talking about spiritually now, our, our Christian uh, friends here in the church, if they get in trouble, brothers and sisters, and they need help, and we see one that's fallen from grace, what do we need to do? Do you know what we need to do? We need to be that friend that sticks us closer than a brother. We are to go to that brother, or we to go to that sister and say, listen, I know that you're going through some things. I know that there's something going on, on here with you. We are to go to our arms around them and say, listen, friend, it's not time to quit. It's not time to give up, but it's time to go forward because Jesus is coming. I have seen people, it makes me so aggravated. I know you can be angry and sin not. It makes me so angry that I see people, you know, when people are trying, about to fall from grace or fall from grace, they say, I wonder what they've done. Wonder what's going on there. They must have done this or must have done that. I want to shake them by the collar and say, Listen, your job is to be a friend and go to your brother. If you see your brother in need or your friend in need, go and help them. You know. And not wonder what, if somebody has backslid or something, I don't care what they have done. The prodigal son came back. You know, Peter came back. You know, and all of these things here. And we are to be a friend to them instead of ridiculing and say, well, what have you done? And I, not only that, I have seen people come to the altar and I hear people back there and say, wonder what they've done. It don't matter what they've done. You're to be a friend and go up with them and pray with them and to help them and to go because this time is running out in this world today. It's running out and we're to be friends to them and to help them. You know, I don't care what they've done. If they come to me and said, I need prayer, I need to get saved, I don't care what they've done. I don't care what color they are. I don't know where, I don't care where they come from. I'm praying for them because that's my duty as a friend. If God's my friend and, and I'm his friend, I'm going to do that. But he said, no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his friend. Now listen to verse 14, what he says here. This is a good one here. He said, You are my friend. If you do whatsoever I command you, you are my friend. Now, I want to add a verse right here into this. Proverbs 17 and 17. I want you to 
Mark this down and I want you to keep it wherever you're at, wherever you put it on your refrigerator, whatever you do with it. A friend loveth at all times. There. You know what that means? It means exactly whenever you got saved, God saved you. It's unconditional love that God had. And we as church people, and church friends. We are to have that in unconditional friendship, unconditional love with one another to help one another as the time occurs there that they need it there. A friend loveth at all times. No matter what they've done, no matter what they've said. There was a person not long ago said something to me. And another person, I won't call their names. You would know them if I would call it. The other person, this first person was rude and said something to me that he shouldn't. And the other person, I didn't say a word. I did not open my mouth or say anything. And this other person, he said, Brother, that would have been me. I'd have took him out and give him a thrashing. But that's not the way you do things. Sometimes it's better to keep silent and let God work it out. You know, and He will work it out. And God did work it out. You know, and that's the way it is. Because a friend loves us at all times. See, you can be a friend to a sinner person as well as you can a Christian person. Am I right? And that's the way we should be. You know. I wanted to add that verse in there. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves us at all times. He says, Ye are my friend if you do whatsoever I command you. Verse 15 says, Hereforth I call you friend. I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I call you friend. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You see, when we stay close to God and when we do what God wants us to do, if we keep the commandments of God and live right, God will reveal things to us that we've never known before. You know, like I said on Star Trek, if you live for God, you go boldly where no man has gone before with God when you're a friend of God. There's no limitations with God. When He's your friend and you're His friend, you can go, you know, there and go with Him and He will reveal things. And I've had Him to show me many, many things that my wife don't know about, nobody else knows about, you know. He has helped me in so many ways, you know. Sometimes God will come to you in a small voice, you know, and sometimes he will just come that you feel the power of God so real. And that lets me know that my friend is there. Praise God. I could shout on that. A friend. Can we be friends with one another? And can we love one another as God has loved us and be that friend that God wants us to be? And like I said with Abraham a while ago, what did there that Moses, I mean Abraham did, and Moses was a friend of God, if you'll go on and read about Moses in there. Well, what was it that made Abraham a friend of God and God a friend to him? Do you know the answer in that? It's very simple. He kept the commandments of God. He did exactly what God wanted him to do. I'll give you some example there. One day God came to Abraham there and told him, said, I want you to go to a land that you don't know nothing about. I want you to pick up your tent and go there. So Abraham picked up his tent and went. He obeyed God and he done exactly what God told him to do. Go into a land and God told him, I'll when you get there, I'll tell you this is the place. There. So he went. And when he got there, God told him, this is where I want you to stay. 
there. You know, so it's very simple. He kept, and then he told him to go and offer his son Isaac on, on the, for a sacrifice upon the hill there, and he was show him there. What did Abraham do? Abraham did it. Everything there that God wanted Abraham to do, he done. He obeyed God. What I'm saying is. If we want to stay friends with God, and we want, and we are, if you're a born again Christian, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and living for God, and on your way to heaven, you're a friend of God, because you've got to do that. You've got to keep keep God's commandments to go with Him, and to be a friend with Him, and He be a friend with you. Just like I read to you what Jesus did: "You're no no longer my servant, but you're my friend, and I'm going to tell you what to do, and what we're going to do, and what's coming." And if you're a Christian and you read the Bible, God is revealing to you what He's going to do in a future that's coming ahead of us. You know, it's going to be the rapture and then the tribulation period and then the thousand years millennial and then in Revelation where the end, where time shall be no more. He gives us that and we are to live the commandments. When you see somebody that's, you know, that's really close to God and really living right for God, you can tell that they're... They're close to God, but they're a friend of God. And you can tell not only that, you can tell, and I can tell exactly every Sunday morning, I can come in and see the friendship that we have here. This congregation is a friend to one another because I can see the friendliness, you know. And if I was a sinner, Philip, and I was looking for a church, that was the kind of church I want to be, where there's friendliness, and where, say, just come on in, come as I am. Back over over 48 years ago, if Jesus to, would said, come to me and said, listen, you get a certain amount of clothes or certain this and certain that, you know, I, don't, I, couldn't, I was poor, I couldn't come. But what he did, he came to me and said, come as you are. I come as I, when I come to the altar, I came just as I was, a sinner. Lost and undone. But I'm going to tell you what. When I left there, I had the kingdom of heaven of friends. Because I was heirs and joint heirs with, with Jesus Christ. And I was a friend. You know. My, land, and my name got written down in the Lamb's book of life. And it was joy unspeakable and full of glory. When I get to heaven, I'm going to see all my friends. Sister York, I'm going to see all of my friends that's there. You know, friends I didn't know I had. You know, because if you didn't know it or not, you've got Christian friends on the other side of the water. You've got friends on the other side of the state. You've got friends in other states that are Christian, that are living right, that are friends with one another. We are to love one another as God loved us here. You know. It talks about in James what I was talking about here. Oh, in James, the second chapter here, if you want to turn there, 2 and 23, it talks about what I was talking about here. He was called the friend of God, Abraham was. Let's read this and see what it says. And the scripture was fulfilled, saith Abraham revealed, believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called, a friend of God, imputed in him. Whatever he wanted to do, he loved God so much that he was willing to do anything, anytime, anywhere, drop anything he was doing and be a friend. What would happen? I'm just going to ask the question here. Let's be honest with one another. It wouldn't take me five seconds to know what I'd do. What would happen if, if those of you that work, if you was on your job and God said drop everything you're doing because there's a friend over yonder that needs help, would you do it? It wouldn't take me five seconds. I would tell the foreman to the boss, I've got to go and I'll be back in a little bit. Dock me if you want to, fire me if you want to because God's my friend and he'll take care of it, you know. 
And one day I was working. I didn't have no idea the boss was going to ask me this. There was a woman that was a horseback riding. That Actually, it was his sister-in-law. And she fell off the horse and broke her back, and she couldn't move, and her hot water heater tore up. He said, would you go down there and fix that hot water for, for her because she can't get out of bed and husband's working, nothing. I said, sure. That's what friends do. So I fixed it, and that made me feel so good I didn't get docked one bit. Facts, I got a raise. You know, not long after, you see how God works? So don't worry about it if God, don't worry about what the world may say. Don't worry about what your neighbor might say or anybody else. If God tells you to go, go to your friend. Church, I'm trying to tell us this morning to be a friend to one another because people are hurting. Christian people are hurting. Things are going on in their life. It may be financial. It may be spiritual, you know. But we are to call one another and let them know that we love them. We appreciate them, you know. We're all in this together. We're all going to the same place, aren't we? We're all going to heaven. And we need to be that friend, you know. It was imputed in him because he liked to do it. He wanted to do it. It was his nature to be a friend, you know. And I think, and I know, if I was to call any one of you in here that I need you to be a friend today, would I know you would do it, you know, because I'm your friend. If you call me, and if you want me to go to Chattanooga with you, I'll go, eh, if you're going to buy dinner. No, no, I would go to them in any circumstance, you know, probably buy their dinner, because I just want to be a friend. And God showed me all of this, you know, even before Thomas called me to teach, that Christian people are hurting and they need a friend. I don't know if he was talking just to me or if he was talking to tell the Sunday school class, but I'm telling you as well as I'm telling me, the Christian people are hurting and need friends. We need to be a friend. When I tell you, I'm honest with you, when people come in to this church and when the church starts, I don't care what they're wearing, I don't, that stuff don't worry about me. What I'm doing, I'm sitting back there. If God needs me to, to go to somebody or to help somebody, I'm ready because I want to be a friend. Because I remember, brothers and sisters, that day that God was a friend to me when I was lost and undone. So I hope I've said something that would help us today to stir up our pure mind to be friends with one another and to be there for our neighbors, for our church people, and for even for sinners. You know, you can do that. You know, I've, I've told this story here before, and I had a, I mean, I had a real good friend that was a, I mean, he would get drunk every day. You know, and I was a friend to him, went frog gigging with him, went everywhere with him, you know, when I got saved. And God told me one time to go down to his house, and I went down to his house. And whenever he heard my voice, he said, Curtis, is that you? I said, yes, it is. He said, I tell you what I want you to do. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of living like this. I want you to pray with me. Oh, man, you could smell this or that, you know, all that stuff. That didn't bother me because he was my friend. I didn't care what condition he lived in, sinner or saint or what. I prayed for him. I can't remember if it was two weeks or three weeks. He come to the church, he went to the altar, and he got saved. He went up in the altar. He could play a harp about as good as anybody I've ever heard, you know, was living for God. You see what I'm telling you? If we be a friend, like we need to be a friend to one another, they will be a friend to you. And if we be a friend to God, 
he will be a friend to us. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I hope I said something that will help you uh, in this lesson today. And, and let's be a friend. God bless you.